Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this second showcase titled Generative AI, A New Frontier for Community College Pedagogy. Uh, before I turn it over to Sean Crawlsby, Christina Gentili, and uh, Dr. Dana Gulu, let me remind you to keep yourself muted. There will be time at the end of this session for questions. And if you have questions uh, that you'd like to place in the chat, feel free to do so and um, preface preface that with the Q colon uh, prefix. So with that, let me turn it over to the presenters. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, my name is uh, Sean Crosby. I'm a senior instructional designer at the Community College of Baltimore County. Just gonna start with introducing ourselves and uh, Christina. Thanks, Sean. So I'm Christina Gentile. I uh, teach Italian Spanish at the Rockville campus of Montgomery College, and I'm also the interim college vice chair of the general studies program. Dana? Hi, my name is Dana Gullo. I work at Cecil College. I'm the Associate Dean for Teaching, Learning, and Technology. Great. Um, so I'm going to start with our presentation today. Uh, just a little background of kind of what, uh, how this came about. Uh, Dana, myself, and Christina took part in the Maryland Online Leadership Institute last summer. Um, as part of the program, we uh, are getting to groups and develop a project that we have worked on over the last uh, six months or so. And our project was focusing on AI and raising faculty awareness um, as part of being able to incorporate AI, uh, you know, in in your teaching or you know, with students using it. Um, part of the project is we developed multiple deliverables to help to raise your awareness, and that was our main goal: is to raise awareness and get you to you know, get faculty to thinking about how to either incorporate it or how to meet students where they are, hopefully teach them how to use it for good and not evil uh, with things. And so part of our project kind of was kind of just started to give faculty sort of that background of AI, you know, with the release of ChatGBT towards the end of 2022, uh, you know, it only took them five days to reach 1 million users, you know, to put that in, in you know, in comparison, it took Instagram two and a half months to reach that number. Facebook, almost a year. Netflix, three and a half years to reach one million subscribers. Um, you know, and artificial intelligence as a field has been around since the early 1950s. So it's not something new. And it's also something that we pretty much use kind of in our everyday life. You know, if you use your phone with Siri or, you know, yelling at Alexa in, in the morning for things or, um, you know, if you're writing an email in Outlook or Gmail, you know, things start kind of predicting what you're writing. So, you know, artificial intelligence, generative AI is kind of in our day-to-day -day use. And, you know, so a part of our goal was also just to introduce that to faculty that, hey, you are already using it. Even going back to, you know, we were in college spell check and Microsoft Word is AI driven, those kind of things. Um, this was a survey done by Cengage uh, last spring. Obviously, if we did this right now, those numbers would probably be much higher. But just as of last spring, you know, four in 10 instructors were already familiar with generative AI and applications. Um, about a quarter of those, you know, reported that they're already using it. And 58% were talking about that they were going to consider using it in their course in the future. Obviously, we did those uh, survey numbers now. We'd probably be much higher with probably almost flipped to, you know, 50 to 60% are using it in some sort of fashion in their role or, you know, and much higher, obviously, maybe planning on exploring it as well. Dana? Yeah, so there's been a lot of discussion about generative AI in higher education. Um, we know some people love using it, some people have concerns. And so in our discussion in our group, we saw the need to raise that faculty awareness and understanding of generative AI to address and even justify some of these concerns. We wanted to offer best practice guide and use cases to demonstrate how AI could be a useful tool when used responsibly. So to that end, uh, after researching examples of what other institutions are doing, considering the reactions and concerns of faculty at our own institutions, we developed an AI usage checklist for faculty and staff. So while we took a look at our, um, tried to take a bit of a holistic approach here, we try to be fairly comprehensive about the concerns we encountered 
and we wanted to offer a quick guide. So it's rather short. It has like 13 questions here. Um, but we wanted to offer this guide so that faculty and staff can gauge how they're using AI. And as we know, whenever we choose to create content with AI tools, it's essential to consider how, why we're using it, as well as other factors to ensure we're using it responsibly and ethically. So the checklist here guides you through key ethical considerations. For example, are you being transparent about the role AI plays in your research? Are you being transparent about what those sources are? Did you check for potential biases and ensure inclusivity? Are you following AI policies and guidelines that may be put forth at your own institution? Have you been transparent about your own use of AI and properly cited those AI sources? And are you using it to complement your work in addition to your own research? To that end, you know, are you able to answer questions about the AI research that you're using? So while this checklist we started intended as, you know, a checklist for faculty and staff, it can very easily be adapted as a checklist for students to ensure that students consider these aspects of their own AI usage. Uh, we also felt that we needed to start here with faculty and staff because we're educators and we believe that in order to ask students to do this, we need to appropriately model this responsible usage for our students. If we don't understand how to use it responsibly, it's going to be hard to point it forward and expect that of our own students. Now, our next step was to consider how we talk about generative AI. Uh, many just starting with this are not going to be aware of the language used, so we also organized a toolkit glossary of fundamental AI terminology. Uh, the glossary here will, will help uh, those starting with AI to kind of understand and become familiar with commonly used terms and also help everyone stay current with AI's evolution. Additionally, educators can assess its potential to enrich their teaching, the activities they use in the classroom, and even course assignments. And again, this goes back to our, our sense that educators will need to understand AI and its potential in order to make informed decisions about its pedagogical usefulness and effective integration of AI into our teaching um, so that students in turn will also learn how to use it responsibly and effectively. So I'll now pass it over to, to Dana to explain a little bit more about our project. Yeah, so then our next step was to come up with an AI comparison chart. So a lot of faculty that I've spoken with, they really haven't played around with any of the GPTs that are out there. So the best way to teach our students how to use it ethically is to actually use the tools ourselves. So we came up with this tool comparison, the most recent that we can come up with. As you can imagine, these tools are changing by the second. But we have a list of the different comparisons of, you know, what is the, the type of GPT? Is it free or is it paid for? Or what are the practical uses of each of these tools? In addition of using the tools, you know, how does it add value to your classroom? And we came up with a list of different uses that you can use in your courses or to any classroom in any modality, meaning face-to-face, -face, online, or hybrid. It can help continue with support career readiness, develop critical thinking skills, and you may think of how could that be possible? We were a little worried that perhaps using a GPT could actually get rid of critical thinking, but if we actually use it for them to with their assignments, compare different outputs from different GPTs, also compare it with their own research and kind of see how valid is the actual output of the GPT. Increase student engagement, generate different ideas to get them started on papers, provide real-time personalized feedback. And as we know in online learning, feedback, immediate feedback is essential. Improve time efficiency, and gain data-driven insights so that could be particularly helpful to see which students are having some difficulty with certain concepts or perhaps on exams. So use cases, we try to divide it into what can potentially faculty use it for as well as students. One of the main ones is writing syllabi. That can be incredibly helpful, especially making sure they're using inclusive language. If you put that in the chat GPT, you could ask it to add different inclusive language to your syllabus, or perhaps ask it for some key important information that maybe you're missing. Of course, outlines or even lesson plans. 
creating different learning objectives and rubrics. And if rubrics can be very difficult and it can be very helpful to get you started in creating them. Developing exam questions and study guides, grading, giving feedback, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps scheduling and monitoring student performance. And we've seen those also in LMSs and their analytics. For students, they can help them with personalized learning, act as a tutor if they're stuck on a particular problem or writing assignment. They could help with as a writing assistant, can help break it down into smaller chunks. This is particularly helpful for students, maybe they have a learning difficulty, ADHD, definitely helps with neurodivergence. Also can provide step-by-step -step guidance and explanations of math problems and quantitative assignments. And also can assist, as I mentioned, with neurodivergent students in creating examples, different types of questions and scenarios that can help them with the concepts that they're studying. Additionally, here is a resource that I believe the link that we'll be sharing, you'll see at the end of this presentation, we'll have a um, QR code that you can access our resources. And this actual will bring, bring you to a form that asks you questions about your class. And it can actually break it down into these different color coded areas. So there's green, yellow, and red. So it'll prompt you to ask your course, your name, and also what type of assignment. And it's limited to writing primarily, but there is also for programming assignments. And as you fill out the form, it'll generate this color code assignment that you could put in your syllabus or in your LMS. It's very handy. So definitely check it out. It's by Ryan Watkins, and the link will be provided in our presentation. To access our faculty AI toolkit, you can scan this QR code. And in the next one, it goes to our remaining resources that we have. Again, all access on the Molly website. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you know, please put them in the yeah. chat. I'll go back to that. Yeah, so <laughs> I need to get to the other QR code. Yeah. <laughs> Did you quickly get it? <laughs> there you go. Oop, you almost had it. There you are for the additional resources. We have one question in the, the chat from Mona. I'd love to hear about your process of thinking about content updates. How are you approaching that as things change? I can go in the order in which we present it. <laughs> um, are you talking more like as sort of, you know, you know, ideas kind of update, you know, for whatever, you know, discipline you may be thinking? or sort of tools and how we up, keep that all up to date. Uh, tools, yeah. I mean, even as we were doing this, um, Google's chat GPT version changed their name from Bard to Gemini. We quickly updated that. Um, you know, chat GPT bought a bunch of things to put behind their paywall, like Dolly, which was a um, uh, image generator. Um, it's really just, it's just trying to stay up to date as best you can. I, I don't know if there's a true approach yet to it just because <laughs> it's it's so new and we're still in the infant stages of even learning how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just been, you know, like last week when I was presenting at another conference, I, I learned that you don't need an account anymore to, to do chat GBT. You, you can just go to straight to the site and start using the free version without creating an account. So it's also just relying on fellow, uh, you know, colleagues and stuff to help with as things, you know, come out there. Yeah, I think that's, that's very <laughs> fair. And what I would have said too, Sean, um, it's moving at such a fast pace that it is difficult to keep everything current. So I think in part, our plan is to do as much as we can but as Sean said, also rely on, on colleagues as they hear about something that they found effective that we can maybe add to that list. Mm. You know, um, we're, we're happy to do that so that it can be more of a comprehensive list and guide for everyone. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, just using it yourself. You know, I just happened to stumble upon, and this was news to me, that Bing actually has ChatGPT4, uh, which is obviously has a paywall if you just go through ChatGPT, and it also has Dolly in there. So that was really you know fun to play with that because that is also behind a paywall as well. So it's just using it. You know, I read a lot of um, journal articles on what's current. There's not many articles out there right now, 
but I've been learning a lot of different AI tools that help assist with students with disabilities. So that's been very eye-opening to see the different GPTs that are out there now to help students. And there was a question about the URL and um, Jacqueline has posted that URL in the chat for those of you who uh, would prefer to access it on a PC and not a phone. And I'll grab the other link as well. Additional questions for our panelists. Sean, Dana, and Christina, as you um, develop this, and, and Derek is, is asking the question I was going to ask, um, how have faculty reacted to this? You, you've all presented at various conferences, different pr uh, presentations. How have faculty responded to the work you've done? So far, I mean, from I've, you know, also we've had like internal professional development days as well. I mean, so far, everyone's been pretty open and wanting to figure out what's best for them, because uh, right now our institution doesn't have a true stance. They included a sort of a line in the academic integrity integrity policy, you know, that's very vague. So it's kind of, you know, at the instructor's discretion right now. So everyone has been pretty open in terms of, you know, figuring out best ways to use it um, and, uh, you know, what's going to make sense best for their course and even down to the assignment level. Obviously, there's some that I've, there's a few instructors that I've worked with from, you know, development that have come to me with tools and have you heard of this? And I'm like, no, but that looks <laughs> awesome <laughs> to use and, you know, great that you're using it to, you know, I don't want to use it perfectly fine. You know, whatever you feel is best for your um you know, your um, discipline, your subject matter, whatever you're teaching. And, you know, there's still some that are hesitant and, you know, want to find ways to do that. And we've worked with them to, you know, think about ways to adapt assignments to, you know, um, I don't want to say AI perfect, really <laughs> tough to do, but, you know, in a way of incorporating AI or, you know, thinking of different ways to assess the students and maybe they can still write a paper, but now they need to you know, sort of record a video of them defending it or whatever it may be that makes sense for that subject. And I, I just add, I think it's opened up the conversation of, can we now create a checklist for students? Um, so I have colleagues who want to kind of work on that aspect now too. So I think it's, it's bringing more people into the conversation and, and, and it is raising more awareness. So that's what we were hoping to do with this. So it's good to see that. Yeah, I agree. At my institution as well, it, it started out with concern uh, about the plagiarism aspect to it to now kind of interest in seeing how it can help mm -hmm. with their instruction as well as with students acting as like a tutor. So now they're really in the mindset of let's learn the tools and how we can use them in our classroom. So that's been a nice shift that I've been seeing. Wonderful. And for those of you who are having trouble accessing the link, we will make sure that you get a, a copy of that link um, as well. And I'm sure Sean, Dana, and Christina will be happy to, to drop their email addresses in the, the chat and you can reach out to them and get the link that way as well. We have about one more minute for one final question. All right, well, I want to thank Sean, Dana, and Christina for this presentation. A, a reminder to the participants that our next session will start at 1210. Um, get yourself a quick lunch, something to drink, and find your next session through the program, uh, and we'll start in 10 minutes.